Okay, so this is uh, Tom Wagner. I'm back here with Mike Jenko, and we're here with part four of our documentation orientation series, and this one's going to deal with the physical exam. Right, and remember our target audience is new hires, but anybody that's uh, experienced or anybody from EPT that's reviewing this, we hope that you will get uh, a little bit out of these modules as well. So a quick review, last time we talked about the history, uh, what elements make up the history section, and a key point to, uh, to remember was the idea of a simple patient versus a complex patient, and the concept that if you have somebody that you think is a simple patient, you really only need two review of systems and one element of your past medical, your surgical, your social, or family history. And we're not really talking about mental capacity here, nope. okay? We're talking about simple complaints. Very, very simple. Not simple-minded. Yes, absolutely. So and then if you have somebody who's complex, you're going to need 10 review of systems, and you're going to need three of the past medical history exactly. elements. So, so don't now, remember all the details of the levels of service. Right. Just simple think in charts, terms of simple versus Simple complaints, complex. simple charts, complex patients, complex charts. Absolutely. And that goes with the physical exam, too. Yeah. And so let's go ahead and dig into the physical exam. So physical exam is a little bit of a simpler section. It's really only the physical exam. There's not a whole lot else that goes with it, unlike the history section. And it's generally going to be broken down by your body area or your organ system. We wanted to take a minute to talk about templates. Right. A lot of people, uh, when they first get used to using a, or learn to use an electronic medical record, they get very excited. Oh, I can make these templates. I'm going to have a trauma physical exam. I'm going to have a medical patient physical exam. I'm going to have a female physical exam, a male physical exam. And you can generate these beautiful templates that have a they full, complete physical exam. They really look very good. The problem is, is that if you use a template like that, you are obligating yourself to not only perform each part of the exam that's detailed in your template, but if the patient has physical findings that deviate from your template, you've got to go in and change all those, uh, everything that's different. So if you've got a beautiful, detailed physical exam of the abdominal uh, abdominal exam, for example, and the patient's there for abdominal pain, you've got to get rid of that whole abdominal exam and start from scratch. Right. Right. Um, and then if they're tachycardic, you got to remember to change their heart rate, et cetera, right. et cetera. What you don't want to have happen is by using your templates, you generate inconsistencies in your medical record. So an example of that in a chart I reviewed last year was a patient who came in with pelvic pain. And the pelvic, uh, the, the pelvic pain chart had a clearly templated physical exam that included a very normal pelvic exam. And then in the medical decision-making section, the provider went to great lengths to explain that the patient had declined the pelvic exam and why he thought that was okay and what he tried to do to, uh, to have the patient reconsider getting the exam. So you have in one area of the chart a documented normal pelvic exam, and in another area of the chart, the physician saying they did that's, actually. That's a huge red flag and uh, would be considered fraud by the by the feds. Yes, and if it ever showed up in court, it would immediately destroy the credibility of the rest of the chart. And the rest of the chart was documented very, very well. Um, so, uh, so with your templates, you really want to keep them basic. I like to say I like to chart by addition. So you can have a basic template that you can do a, most of the elements of required elements for a physical exam with your eyes without ever even touching the patient, which goes against everything you learned in medical school. But for terms of documentation, if you've got a simple template that, uh, that employs you know, what you can see and what you can learn from just talking to a patient, it makes it very easy to right. add abnormal findings like a detailed abdominal exam right. or in a patient with pneumonia, a detailed lung exam that explains the abnormal physical findings that you have. And we're going to have an example of one of those a little bit later on in this module that you can uh, copy if you want to. It, so go ahead. I was going to say a quick review again. We spent some time in the last module talking about financial implications and I just wanted to review those again because it is such an important uh, concept. Uh, remember that the elements of the chart, for the most part, determine reimbursement, and that 80% of is emergency groups, medicine revenue, E and M, emergency <laughs> and medicine. Yeah, you got it. Or evaluation and ah, right, the level of service codes, evaluation and management. Right. About 10 to 20% is going to come from procedures, and remember, there's five uh, E and M levels. Level one is the most basic. Level five is the most complex. There are also critical care codes on top of that. Um, Which you can look forward to a module on those coming yeah, to a... Yeah, I hadn't actually planned that, but that's probably a good idea. Yeah, we're going to do, do that, that for sure. Uh, and remember that it, for the most part, it's the amount of work you do and not actually the diagnosis that's going to determine how much our coders can bill for the visit. So 
We talked about this with the history section last time. Uh, we talked about what re is required in the physical exam section to meet a certain E&M level. And I have a beautiful chart that I've spent a lot right. of time putting together. And I want you to forget it. Basically, this Killing says me. like a simple uh, emergency, evalu emergency medicine. I Evaluation know. and management level requires one body area or organ system, and it's limited to that affected body area. In a complex, you need eight organ systems or body areas, and you get a general exam. Okay, forget this slide. I don't want you to know what you need for a three or a four or a two. Just remember, simple patients, simple complaints. You right. have an ankle sprain, examine the ankle. Document the ankle exam. You'll right. be fine. Now, if you go back here and you look, you look at an ENM4 requires five to seven body areas, and an ENM5 requires eight uh, body areas. Right. So remember that break point. So what we recommend is that you create a very basic template of things that you can do while you're talking to the patient without actually touching the patient that are, uh, by their very nature, very, very common things that people just demonstrate when they're in the emergency department. And then use that template as your base and then tailor the encounter to that patient's specific physical exam. So right. if it you takes use, less time and effort to add elements to your physic your basic template than it does to take a very detailed template right. and take all the stuff out that's not right. Absolutely. So this is an example of one that I use and you can tell that it's got seven areas. It's got Head, eyes, pulmonary, neuro, skin, and psychiatric. And so you've got almost a comprehensive complex exam. And you'll notice you don't have to touch the patient to get this exam. Right. It's all very basic stuff that you can do and observe while you're talking to the patient. And then if you have someone who's coming in for a very focused problem, like an ankle injury, then you can focus on putting in your positive or your pertinent negative findings in the musculoskeletal section. If on the other hand it's a complex patient who comes in with chest pain, then you're going to you're going to flesh out your pulmonary section a little bit more. You're going to add in a cardiac section. You may add in some more neuro uh, neuro things. You may add in some uh, musculoskeletal in the form of the presence or absence of pulses, edema, et cetera, et cetera. And you might the only thing you might need to change here is, for example, if they've got a respiratory complaint and they're in distress, you could get rid of no respiratory distress and effort normal. And then, you know, document the wheezes and the tachypnea mm -hmm. and the tachycardia. You're adding elements there that are positive. So, and, and you can imagine if you're working with a, a scribe, for example, and you're dictating your encounter to them or mm -hmm. describing it, you know, you got a patient come in with an ankle sprain. You know, patient's got, you know, soft tissue swelling, tenderness over the medial malleolus. They've mm -hmm. got, you know, distal neurovascular intact, and you can also use my normal physical exam macro. Absolutely. So they take your physical exam macro, they add that onto it, and you've already got a comprehensive exam on that patient. Yep. So hopefully that was a pretty good review for you. Again, we want you to think in terms of simple versus complex encounters, and we want you to be very, very careful with your templates. And I, where I see people get in trouble with templates the most is in their physical exam. So uh, please uh, be cautious with them. In right. our next module, we're going to talk about medical decision making. That's probably the most important part of the chart, in my opinion. And um, a, lot of, a lot of good tips and tricks we have for you there. That's where you really tell the story about what happened in the, in the, uh, yeah. in the encounter. And just remember, simple complaint, simple chart, complex complaint, complex chart. That's all you need to know.